Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at some open AI products. As there's a lot of hype right now, especially around the chat GPT product that they have, I'm also going to take a look at the Python function as well. So they have a library and as long as you get an API key that's completely free, you just got to give them your email, you can utilize their uh, machine learning and AI technology through the use of Python. And then we'll also go through the fun stuff of the chat GPT, give it a couple coding questions, and let's see what it actually gives us. All right, so let's start by looking at who this company actually is before we start using their products. So it is a Silicon Valley based company, about 450 employees, and they have some more info underneath about their unicorn status. Elon Musk is actually a founder. Then if we go through their rounds of funding, its total funding at this point is a billion dollars with four funding rounds. And people like Sequoia, Microsoft, and the Reed Hoffman Foundation are on here. So that's who's given money to it. And if we go to their LinkedIn, we can get a sense of there's that 455 employees that they have. Interesting that they're listed as a research service and then 300K followers on LinkedIn. I think it's pretty cool. And then they have a pretty simple website. This is honestly a pretty standard template out of Wix for just a tech site. But what's nice is if you go under here, you can see all the things that they offer. So the big product right now is ChatGPT. There's the Dolly package, which I'll show you in Python, which is pretty cool. And just some other, other things. So um, yeah, pretty standard stuff. All right, so let's try out this really hyped chat GPT. So code a R shiny app. So if you're not familiar, R shiny is an app framework that uses R. So let's say somebody at your company is doing statistics with an R and they say, Hey, I want you to build an app. This is what you would do. You would build in basically a UI framework, a server function. The server function would look at the UI framework. And then you would basically just have an app with whatever your code is. So this is good. Um, this is essentially a Google search. So this is not that impressive, but I do think it's kind of cool that they break it down for you into the steps of, you know, you're going to need to build a UI server, then you're going to need to run the app. But what's interesting is if you actually give it a bit of something that's not out in the world currently. So code our shiny app with SAML authentication. So SAML authentication is single sign on of, you know, you have the Google button on the login of the app and then you say log into my Google account and then my app would know, hey, that's Matt because he used the SAML authentication. And so what's interesting is that I've done this question a few times into chat, chat GPT, and it's done this a couple times. It says there's a library for this when I'm very certain there's not, right? So essentially this thing is just making up answers and it's gonna see if it's right a lot of times. So if I actually look up shiny SAML, so this is saying it's already a package. Someone's already coded this. It's, it's no big deal, right? I just have to go grab the package. Shiny the SAML R package. Yep, that's not it. That's Azure Auth. Yep, that's not it. There is no package that exists in this at all. Like you have to go through the server configurations. I'm not going to get into that. But I think it's interesting that, you know, it just kind of made it up. <laughs> uh, it, like it said, this exists, I'm pretty sure. I'm connecting, like that's, if you remember from our first query of Code R Shiny App, that's exactly what it did. Then it's saying, hey, make a function, call it sample authentication, and then put that into your app. Which the thing is, is that this is actually the correct answer for my problem that I'm trying to solve. However, it does zero things to implement it. This is just giving you, you know, the steps or the heuristics to go through and say, okay, I need to build an app, then I need to build a function that is the same authentication. So I hope this is a good example of, you know, it is super cool, but really it just gave me an answer that doesn't exist. 
the concept and the thought behind it is really good. But if you don't understand anything about programming and you're expecting this to solve all your problems, it will not do it. All right, so now that we're familiar with OpenAI in just general, let's take a look at it in Python. Pretty straightforward. In my requirements.txt, I have uh, OpenAI dependency. And then if we actually go into the script, we can load this. So all I'm doing is I'm loading the package. I'm grabbing the OS package to grab the environmental variable for my API key. And this API key is generated when you make an account. So the account is free. You just have to give your email. So now that our workspace is loaded with the API key, we can start working with the package. And so in general, I'm going off the instructions from their OpenAI Python uh, repository and their readme. So if we go down here, we can go to the section that honestly is the most fun and it's making visuals. So AI generated art with Dolly. If we go here, you'll see me using the package. I want an image and I'm gonna create it and it's gonna be of two dogs playing chess and I want it to be an oil painting. And I want four pieces of art so that I can choose from the art and see which one I like the most. So if we run this, it'll take a second. Now it's done. And now we can take a look at what it kind of looks like. So if you look at the response here, we're taking what I built here, and I'm subsetting it for one. So these are two dogs playing chess. So if I change this to zero as, you know, Python, the index is at zero. There's another picture, let's do two. Another picture of two dogs playing chess. And then three, four, the fourth one. So that's pretty cool. Four different very interesting uh, pictures. And then the second part is that I kind of want to show is the search engine. So just to give a sense of, this is a different part of the API, but they have a bunch of different AI and machine learning behind the scenes. So you can kind of just pick through here and look at all the engines that OpenAI has uh, within the Python framework, which as you can imagine, can get pretty robust when you're talking about your scripts and optimizing scripts on the fly in your programming space. So more documentation is here with various services that they have. So you'll see search engines, engines, all that good stuff in their documentation if you wanna look forward. So in general, I feel like everybody is hyped and crazed pretty heavily on OpenAI right now. So I thought of this future meme. Uh, I have a crush on you, open AI, it'll go away. So with a lot of this stuff, there is just a lot of hype. Uh, and I do believe, I mean, obviously the use of artificial intelligence is not new, right? Like a lot of companies are using this pretty heavily. Um, I think it's interesting that this is, whoever has done the PR for this has done well. I mean, Elon is a founder, so we know that his his reach in the social space is pretty high, but yeah, I think it'll be one of those fads that, you know, you play with it for a little bit, you build the dolly pictures and then it'll fade. I see a lot of similarities with this than with crypto and to the extent of, let's say that dolly package. I mean, that's how a lot of people are actually building NFTs, the AI generated artwork so that they're unique, you know, pictures. So I think it's cool. I think it's just great to get people in tech talking, but yeah, when it comes down to the people losing it over losing their jobs. If you have programming skills and you understand how technology works and you've grinded and kind of spent the time to really understand how to build software, those skills will never erode, right? Like you still need to understand the basic fundamentals, but these types of tools can really speed up the process of innovation and new technology. Is that you'll see other tech emerge, right? So I would assume over the next few months and probably a couple of years that you'll see competitors like TensorFlow, H208 AI, and DataRobot 
So I've used the top two. So TensorFlow is a Google product. And I've already seen that they're already starting to boast how Google Sheets has machine learning optimization in them, right? So uh, yeah, I think in a lot of ways, this is actually just drumming up these other products that are probably from bigger companies. Uh, H2O AI I have used before as well, super fast, and a lot of people love it, and data robots. So these are just some other tech companies to kind of take a look at or you know, at least be aware of as these things kind of come up. But I do think you'll see probably a, a little bit of a spike in the AI space, but I think there will be a pretty significant drop. So I hope this was helpful. I think in general, these things are good just to be aware of. And once again, my contact info, if curious about any of these things, is mattmajestic at proton.me. Thanks.